negative space. In this shot, it's actually a marvelous depiction of not only the compositional elements of negative space, but we have her allowing a lot of room to her right, filling up the shot, but also the internal feeling she has of negative space. So this is one of the wonderful things about cinema where you can actually get inside a person's head just by the way we frame the shot. Now, a basic definition of negative space is basically all the space that's not occupied by the main point of our focus is what we call negative space. So here, our actress is looking off and where her head has left room in the frame, that's what we call negative space. And it's kind of like talking room, so that where, where our, our eyes are drawn to the, to the space anticipating an interlocutor or what she's looking at. Just like this woman here, the negative space. We, we give it enough room, we observe the rule of thirds, but we also, the negative space has the talking room that she's looking towards so that our eye is drawn towards that so that we anticipate the next frame. Here, of course, is the example of the first shot we have. But the, looking at it, I mean, you really study is that not only do we have that space that she isn't occupying, that our eyes are drawn to, so that we look at the graffiti, which, of course, underscores the theme when we haven't forgotten you, whatever. It might have something to do with the theme of the movie. But the fact is our eyes are drawn there, but still we're obsessed with her. So although she's not occupying most of the space here, we are still with her. Here in, of course, American Horror, we have Jessica Lange and the negative space to our left that we see. She's, she's as you can tell from the shot, she's actually internally ruminative. She's not really focused on anything. She's not really looking at anything. And yet, because we allow that space and we rack the focus so that it's not in focus, we just look at her, that negative space allows us to actually think of the room in her mind that she's mulling over things. Of course, when we get to our horror genre, negative space is going to be used all the time. And here in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, negative space is basically that part of the frame that we're going to be occupying to get out of the way of uh, Leatherface. And here, of course, uh, Halloween, low shot, where we're looking up at the assailant. The negative space is not only to the left of the frame where we're occupying it, but we can feel trapped too because of the close confines, the way this is framed so that we're inside the closet here, we feel trapped and we try and you can just feel the way we're trying to crawl into the corner just because of the way the negative space occupies its lower left. In Jaws, here we got Roy Scheider, he's looking off and he's looking for the, for the big shark. But again, we want that negative space to be allowed in the frame so that what's not occupying the frame is what's in his mind. We, we can see he's not, just like Jessica Lange, he's not looking at anything. He's actually meditating, but, but what he's meditating about is actually to the right of the frame. And here, going back to horror, the hostile, the negative space, um, has that weird art department, which is really excellent in this, in this whole genre here, but the art department of that negative space, the spackle on the wall, whether it's mold, are there what's dried blood, are there what, or, or whatever decay, lichen, it, it just dominates the frame. Although the lead actor here is, is our point of focus, the background dominating the frame in the negative space adds to the whole mood of uh, terror. Here, negative space, a, a, a vampire who's going to probably launch herself again, but look at what look at what's happening here. Is I mean, the negative space is to, to as we look at it, to her left, um, and we're there. We're 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 kind of dominating her. We're looking down on her, but the negative space because she's low and we're up, isn't as threatening. It's 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 uh, arresting but not threatening. And here's a classic use of good negative space balancing off a good rule of thirds. Actually, Roy Costner. Uh, uh, is it Kevin Costner, I'm sorry. Kevin Costner looking off the frame to our left, and um, he looks a little diminished in a certain sense, um, kind of 
nonplussed. But you can see that where we're or whoever he's talking to is occupying the frame is the source of concern. And here, of course, negative space is that long walkway down a motel, classic shots. Anytime we have an approach to a door in a motel, we don't go straight on, mainly because no one actually goes straight on a motel room. Usually they walk down the side doors and anybody, but even then, we don't go straight on because it's not as arresting, it's not as anticipatory, and it's not as uh, uh, tension bound if we don't have them walking along the side uh, of the frame. Here's a good example of negative space where uh, the man on the couch, like this man on the couch, they're going to be looking off, and it, it you know the negative space puts them at a disadvantage because they're kind of ensconced there and they're they're kind of situated there, and but we can feel the energy that they want to, to this guy. You can tell he wants to get off the couch, whereas the previous shot he seems stuck on the couch. So one is like a heavy use of negative space. One is a uh, uh, because of the light in the lower third to the left, it's kind of anticipates a movement. Uh, and here's one from the artist. Um, the negative space, of course, is where the camera points. So it's pretty easy to see how easily it was to compose this. And in gravity, here we have Sandra Bullock. Look at the use here, not only of the rule of thirds, but the space. She's looking literally into space. The negative space is infinite. And this is, of course, one where we would probably use it as an example as, as, as a chase movie or a suspense movie, but because we've allowed so much space to the right of this figure, all we're going to do is anticipate what's going to come in from the right. He's almost off the left, but what do our eyes want? Our eyes want to know what's going to come to the right. So by anticipating whatever appears in the right, it is always going to be welcome. Of course, not so welcome here in a horror movie. What's coming from the right um, is, of course, going to be bad or not not exactly uh, friendly. But what happens here? This is this is we're ready now. We're in the horror movie. We're ready for uh, this monster. And if you really want to surprise us, and this is done all the time, if you really want to surprise your audience, if you have someone looking off to the right like this, and you have the monster come in from the left, it really jolts us because what we anticipate from the right is then, of course, contradicted from the left, and we were jolted out of our seats. Here, um, here's a good uh, 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 horror movie scene I'm, in so many ways. And obviously, the negative space is this long hallway where this this uh, girl's going to come down, and, and, uh, um, and we're, we're, you can feel our shock as if we're another student how we're just immobilized by this grim figure sloshing its bloody footsteps down the hall. And and the, and the way it's set up, though, is, is that as she comes, we're frozen in the negative sp space off the left. It makes it all that much, much more horrific. And also, we'll be talking about this in another lesson, but the, the color composition is as masterful here. It's this, this bland, antiseptic beige and then suddenly this very crimson human blood coming in um here here we have uh and you know the negative space someone you can feel someone hiding and this is a classic you know if you want to if you want to have the chase scene or if you want to have somebody who's um uh trapped you want to put them in, a, in, a, in an upper or lower third, so that the negative space is part of the trap. Here, part of the trap. Here, not so much part of the trap. Here, it looks like, okay, they've gone as far as they, they can go. Now they're going to come back. They're going to launch themselves into the space. Not so much here. This is another trap shot. And if you want the ultimate trap shot, here we go, of course. you know, We've got our uh, spooky character in the hallway of the school who uh, is looking at us from the upper third. And we're like that other school shot where we were paralyzed the lower third to the left. That's similar to this too. We're paralyzed for a different reason, not because of the horror of what we've seen, but from the horror of what might occur. And Freddie, Freddie will remind us 
that that lower third negative space is something we don't want to occupy if we're in his neighborhood because he's looking to occupy that space in his own way. Now, here at Paranormal uh, Movies, we, we, we the, the, the use of negative spaces is, is masterful there. And if, we, if you've seen any of the Paranormals 1, 2, or 3, the use of the door on the left of the frame in that negative space area, in basically the upper third, is, is, is empty but horrific. It's horrific because, okay, it uses the rule of third for us to anticipate whatever is bad is going to come up that stairway and down that hall and it's going to come through that portal right there. And just by leaving that door open and adding some horrific sounds, we talked about how important sounds are for the horror genre, just by adding those horrific sounds and, of course, and putting in the kind of a night light uh, video kind of... Uh, capturing of images like it's kind of security camera so we don't have to go into high special lighting or anything by doing that by being very real um we can have the conflict with the couple on the right but the negative space is what's causing that conflict and here here of course this amps up the tension because not only is the negative space that's on that's on the left here um uh, prominent, but she's on the left and she's got her back to the bed, so she's kind of trapped in this bad energy. Here, we change the energy with our negative space and our upper uh, third and the right here. We, we allow the space to have a different meaning. This isn't a space that's negative in the sense of emotions. This space is negative because it's empty, but it's positive in the sense of this is where these characters want to go. This is a place that is beckoning to them with pleasure. And you can break uh, rules of thirds and play with negative space against convention to put your uh, emotions across in the movie. And here in conversations, we got Gene Hackman and what he's done, we put him in the middle of the shot here because we want the character on the right hand side of the frame to feel as if he's kind of pressed in a corner. If Gene were in the right place on the left side of the screen in the upper third it would be balanced and everything he might be taller so there's a dominance here but as we've moved him in because we've broken that convention it feels like this person is a little imposed upon by gene so by getting rid of the negative space we give a claustrophobic feeling to the shot and here here's a shot that i really couldn't capture off the web for you uh it's, it's a superman shot um but I think it's very clear. It's like an Andrew Wyeth painting where we see the, the stretch of farmland and the house in the distance. And then we have, of course, our figures down, down towards us and the, and the horizon line. They're kind of dominating the horizon line because we, 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 we put the horizon line way in the distance. But they're towards us. But the negative space that leads back to the farmhouse and having them here closer towards us, it gives us a feeling where they're not really secure in their environment in the sense that the house is almost too far off. It's where they want to be. It beckons, but they're too far off. So we anticipate something about to occur. And finally, here's a great shot. Here, negative space, upper uh, left third. This man, retired, elderly, doesn't matter. Because the space is situated such that he is looking off to the to, to the right here, and he's nobody we know, he's no hero, no great, you know, magic figure or, or, or you know, Spider-Man or Superman or anybody like that, no action figure. But still, we figure that this huge emptiness is imposing upon him, and he makes himself just utterly fascinating because... He's in the upper third, and this open space, something's got to happen. Something will occur. Anything walks in that space, it's going to be interesting. And that's what's the magic of negative spaces. If you allow your frame, your frame to, to balance the negative space correctly with, without too much busyness, without too much clutter, you can increase the suspense and the surprise just by us anticipating something to fill it.